Hello and welcome to Arabian Business TV. I'm standing inside the prototype stadium, which in 12 years' time, Qatar hopes to host the World 2022 World Cup. It's bidding against five other countries for the month-long sporting event, which it hopes that more than 500,000 fans will attend. The country is spending more than $50 billion on developing new infrastructure, such as hotels and transport. It's also developing an entirely new cooling system using solar panels to cool the stadiums during the summer heat. Some experts remain convinced that this bid isn't, isn't likely to happen. What would you say to those critics? I'd say very simply, uh, we've worked very, very hard uh, from the beginning, uh, from, you know, from, from the first days. Uh, today we are contenders. If you look at any of the uh, FIFA or, or any of the analysis that occurs in terms of the bids, uh, we are contenders. We were, we're strong competitors, as a matter of fact. Uh, we've undertaken this bid. Uh, we've come up with very, very unique ideas, very new, innovative ideas, as Qatar generally is known, as the Middle East is also known. And uh, we are a very serious bid, without a doubt. And all you have to do is just look at some of the, uh, some, some, some of the commentaries out there. What do you think this means for c misconceptions in the Arab world in terms of people coming over here and being able to see what the Middle East is all about? I think the World Cup in, in the Middle East will, will go a long way a very, very long way towards uh, uh, alleviating a lot of these misconceptions. I mean, if we look at uh, the benefits of South Africa, we could see what that meant for Africa as, as a continent. Uh, bringing the World Cup uh, to the Middle East uh, will take away a lot of the misconceptions that the world may have about the Islamic world and about the Arab world and the Middle Eastern world. But at the same time, it also work the other way around and allow the Islamic and, uh, and Arab world to also look at different people from different parts of the world even more. Uh, to be able to participate with them even more and ce celebrate with them 30 days uh, of, of, of the beautiful game that again will create stronger bonds and, and open up more and more doors for dialogue. Can you talk to me about the economic impact that this will have on the country and also the, the rest of the region as well? Well, there will be significant economic Im uh, impact uh, for, you know, if we look at it for uh, the country Qatar in particular. Of course, having, having the World Cup here, again, with a significant number of infrastructure developments that are already occurring, and in addition to some of the requirements for the FIFA World Cup, the construction industry itself will increase significantly. Uh, but again, the best thing about the World Cup for Qatar is it complements very well our plan about, of economic diversification. What we would be doing is uh, we're investing significantly in the tourism industry, as I said earlier. Uh, we're looking towards developing the education industry. We're looking towards developing the uh, media and the broadcasting industry with the uh, advent of the uh, Qatar uh, media, Barwa Media City. So there's a number of different areas that are being undertaken right now or being looked at towards uh, diversifying the economy. World Cup in the Middle East in Qatar will assist in diversifying that economy. Of course, the tourism industry will benefit uh, significantly, but also the sports industry, which is a vibrant industry in most parts uh, of the world, especially in particular Europe, for example, will be allowed to, to, to be developed over here. Um, if you look at it throughout the region, if you look at the, uh, the Middle East in general, uh, of course the tourism industry will, be, will benefit uh, indirectly, but also, as I said, the other services, service sectors industry will develop further because people will want this to be a successful World Cup for Qatar and for the region itself. Japan and South Korea collaborated to host the 2002 World Cup. Did you ever consider co-hosting? There were initial thoughts, obviously, about co-hosting, uh, but then after, you know, we looked into it. Uh, we, we decided uh, not to proceed with that concept for uh, a couple of reasons. The first reason uh, being that uh, FIFA had, had, had a, uh, did not look favorably at joint bids. Uh, but more importantly also, which was the second reason, was we were very, very uh, confident about our ability also to host it on our own. Um, and again, based on these two, uh, on these two reasons, we proceeded uh, to uh, go ahead with our own bid. And we're still very, very confident in our ability to be able to host the games. I'm here with Dario Calavid, who's overseeing the technical aspect of the cooling system. Dario, can you tell me how exactly this system works? Okay, this is a prototype building for a, for a stadium that is powered by the sun. So we have two series of systems that are powered by the sun. One is the photovoltaic panels that are exporting energy to the grid continuously. So when we need it for the matches, we will take energy from the grid. But the amount of energy that we will be exporting through a, through a year is going to be higher than the one that we needed. So those are the basis for a zero carbon technology. Okay. And on the other side, we have a series of solar collectors that are heating up water to a very high temperature, around 180 degrees Celsius. This hot water goes into a store into a tank and from then into, into an absorption chiller. This is a machine that, uh, through a chemical reaction, converts very hot water into chilled water, around 7 degrees Celsius, that comes to the stadium 
And once in the stadium, it's also chill water gets stored in a big tank that is right now underneath the city. And this tank has the capacity to keep the cool for about uh, 10 hours. So basically for, for the World Cup or for the use of the stadium, we're gonna have matches from 4 p.m. until 10 or 11 p.m. We will, we will have enough capacity to cool the stadium, even that we are not getting sun from the, we are not getting power from the sun. And then once the, from the tanks goes through the air handling units, from the air handling units, air is being pumped at the ankle level, at the neck level, a very low velocity air. And we are getting air about, about 18 degrees Celsius. So the temperature that we are achieving, that we are targeting to achieve in the pitch area is around 26 to 29 degrees Celsius. And at the, at the spectator area will be around 31 degrees Celsius. This is calculated for a very hot day in Doha that could be around 44 degrees outside. And it has been tested during the FIFA inspection last week. We achieved temperatures about 22, 23 degrees Celsius in one of the hottest days in Doha. That day particularly was 44. So there you have it. No doubt there'll be plenty of people in Qatar with their fingers crossed for the December 2nd decision. Thank you for watching Arabian Business TV.